the Brandenburg Gate in the heart of the city of Berlin. In May 1945, Berlin had fallen to the Russians. Hitler was dead. Germany lay powerless. Three years later, another battle was fought in Berlin, but this time it was a political battle. A monument stands outside Tempelhof Airport in Berlin. It's a reminder of the 79 people who died in the struggle to keep this city open to the West. Berlin in 1945 seemed a ghost city, and it was a divided city. That had already been decided by the three Allied leaders who at Potsdam were settling the shape of the post-war world. They divided the whole of Germany into four zones of military occupation. Although it was in the Russian zone, Berlin, the former capital, came in for special treatment. It too was carved up into four sectors. For the first two months, the Russians were the sole military occupiers of Berlin. They tried to get the city started again. On July the 1st, 1945, British, American and French garrisons moved into their sectors of Berlin. In public, the wartime allies were still the best of friends. They defeated Hitler together. They divided Germany together. But beneath all the comradeship, disagreements were starting. The Russians proposed that the biggest socialist party in Germany should combine with the communists. But the socialists in the western sectors insisted on putting it to the vote. Many of them suspected that unity with the communists might mean unity under the communists. As it turned out, a large majority in the western sectors rejected the Russian idea. This was a setback for Stalin. The Red Army still had two million men under arms. Stalin was determined to make Eastern Europe into a buffer zone to protect Russia. In March 1946, Churchill voiced a new phrase, the Iron Curtain. From Stettin in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an Iron Curtain has descended across the continent. In Berlin, military leaders from all four powers sat in the Allied Control Council. The council ran the country and the city. All decisions had to be unanimous. The council agreed on how people and goods must get to Berlin from the west. One highway from Hanover via Magdeburg to Berlin. One railway, Hanover, Magdeburg, Berlin. An air corridor from Hamburg to Berlin. Another from Hanover. A third from Frankfurt. In the October 1945 elections, the Russians had great hopes that the communist-led Socialist Unity Party would win. It flopped. Led by Ernst Reuter, the non-communist Social Democratic Party got almost half of the votes throughout the city. Rebuilding had hardly got underway. Everything was rationed. The Allies disagreed about how to cope with inflation and the flourishing black market. In January 1947, Britain and America combined their zones into a single economic unit. In March 1948, they went even further. In London, they decided to press ahead without the Soviet Union and plan a separate West German state. In Berlin, the Russians wanted to know what had been decided in London. General Clay, the American representative, wouldn't tell them. The Russians walked out. It brought Allied cooperation to an end. The Russians began to apply traffic restrictions on routes to the west. Martial aid was helping West German industry to revive, but a further step was being considered to replace the inflated wartime currency with a more stable one. The Russians saw this as a provocative move because they wanted to introduce their own currency, not only into the Russian zone, but also in Berlin. However, the Western Allies announced that only their currency would circulate in West Berlin. 
the contest was on. On June the 24th, the Russians stopped all rail traffic to Berlin. On August the 24th, autobahn and canal links were severed. Gas and electric supplies from East Berlin were cut. Berliners living and working in the western sectors seem to be facing a very hard winter. On June the 25th, the Western Allies started an airlift to provide two million people with the necessities of life. To begin with, uh, the routine was that you had an aircraft allocated to you. As soon as it was loaded, you took off from Wunsdorf, came to Gatow, unloaded, went back and waited again for your aircraft to be loaded. You did three of these trips and then were given the 24-hour stand-down period. You had to keep very exact timing coming up the corridor because there was another aircraft 30 seconds ahead of you at the same level and you were probably in cloud. And if you missed out um, on your speed or, or didn't see the ground at, at this end of Gatow, then you overshot and there was no other slot for you to come back round in again. You went back to your base. This was another thing which impressed me immensely. Again in the early period, during this bad weather, on an afternoon off, I sat out on the airfield at Wunstorf and there was low cloud and there was rain and I watched from that same hole in the cloud this constant procession at 30 second intervals coming into land. There were aircraft landing as others were taking off, they were streaming onto the tarmac, they were being unloaded by the German workers who incidentally were on the aircraft before you almost stopped and you were away again and this was the overall impression, a constant stream of stuff never ending, day and night. 5,000 tons a day kept coming, food, coal, oil, despite the weather, despite accidents. The 100th day of Russian blockade. But Moscow hadn't counted on the determination of the Western Allies. Nor had Moscow counted on the will of the Berlin people. The Russian blockade slashed transportation. The people walked. The Russian blockade cut gas supplies. The people got used to cooking slowly. The Russian blockade brought darkness to the city. The people got used to candlelight. The Russians kept up the political pressure. The Berlin City Council was still meeting in the Russian sector until communist-led crowds besieged the town hall. The council moved to the western sectors and continued to meet. On September the 5th, the Social Democrats called a mass rally. Mayor Reuter spoke for 350,000 Berliners. In America, in England, in Frankreich, in Italian, schaut auf diese Stadt und erkennt, dass ihr diese Stadt und dieses Volk nicht preisgeben dürft, nicht preisgeben könnt. The Berliners' refusal to panic, plus the Allied aircraft, proved too much for the Russians. They couldn't crush West Berlin economically, they couldn't win it politically. Stalin had his own problems and was in no position to fight. In January 1949, Stalin said the Russians were ready to negotiate, and on May the 5th, the blockade ended. On July the 14th, 1949, the Soviet Union exploded its first atomic bomb. The four years of American nuclear monopoly were over. To Western eyes, Stalin's power to enforce his threats seemed immeasurably greater. Twelve nations combined in a united front from the Tropic of Cancer to the North Pole. Signing Great Britain into this group of nations are Ernest Bevin... And the North Atlantic Treaty Organization drew Europe and America together against what was seen as the threat of communism.